Good morning, everyone. You know, I thought uh, rather than introduce Harold and Pixie, they could introduce themselves. For, the, for those who don't know, um, when I was having my conversation with them, it reminded me of a Bollywood blockbuster movie. Okay? To those who haven't watched Indian movies, their story has action, there's drama, there's romance, okay, there's romance. Uh huh, uh huh. Tons of them. There's love, and there's pain, there's struggle, there's tears, and we do not want to leave out any of that. So, just like a Bollywood Indian movie, this is not going to be short. We are going to have a first session today and there will be more, and then there will be more. So yeah, <laughs> you're gonna be hearing a lot about them, and uh, you'll be hearing a lot from me. So please be patient. Let's start, yeah? Pixie, I'll start with you. So tell me about yourself. Where were you born? Where were you raised? Where do you come from? For those who don't know, I am originally a Pakistani. I came here in 78 with my parents and met and married Harold in 88. Yeah, I, pro I vowed I wouldn't marry an Indian, ended up marrying an Indian. So never say no to God, people. Man proposes and God disposes. Yeah, yeah? true. Yeah. Harold, what about you? Where were you born and raised? I was born in, in India. So, yeah. I was born in India in a beautiful hill station called Yerkod. Uh, if you know Uti, some, something like that. It's close to Uti. Uh, that's how I would picture it. So I was born there, uh, grew up there, but then moved to other cities as well, the long journey which, which I will share. But that's where I was born, yeah. So to those who don't know, India and Pakistan have a rivalry that I, I don't know if, if any other country or countries come close. Um, and for me, what was interesting is that not only did you guys meet, but that you chose Harold and Harold chose Pixie. Harold, from what I hear, it was love at first sight, yeah? You fell like head over heels in love with Pixie. <laughs> come on. We both have our different versions, though. <laughs> so tell you, the truth, you, tell you the truth. Have to put I'll go with Pixie's version here. Okay. Pixie's version. <laughs> yeah, I was being very holy at, at church and I didn't know anything. I was welcoming people and he came and he said, wow, so yeah. That's what her version is. <laughs> That's my version. In Pixie's version, Harold was speechless and Pixie took time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I go with Pixie's version here, Harold. For Harold to be speechless takes a lot. <laughs> so how has your how has your faith journey been? I have seen you guys serve as 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 elders in the church. How long has that walk with with God been? For me, uh, it has been almost thirty four years. I grew up in a Christian f uh, family where we read the Bible every day, we prayed every day, uh, we went to church. I studied in a boarding school, so you had to go to the chapel every morning, every evening. If you wanted your pocket money, you had to memorize scripture. You say the scripture, you get your pocket money. So I grew up in a Christian family. But as I grew into the teenage years and the early 20s, I was not interested in God. <laughs> I was running away from God. I was not interested. So if somebody would invite me to a church meeting, I would run the opposite direction. Yeah, until God, God got a hold of me in 1988, January 1st. And there's been no turning back after that. I knew without a shadow of doubt that God had saved me and changed my life around. There's a lot to share about the changed life that's before I'd become a Christian. But I knew for a, without a doubt that God had saved me and, and I needed a savior. How did you know Pixie was the one? How did I know? When you, when you recovered your speech and after that. When <laughs> <you> <laughs> I was breathless, she says. <laughs> uh, so 
they, they say, you know, when you go to, go to church, it's a good thing. So actually, I, the first time I saw Pixie was in church, and I did say, wow. Uh, you know, I did, because I said, wow. Because then I saw the, I did, uh, when I came to know she's from Pakistan, I said, wow, they can be so beautiful. And uh, yeah, but then, you know, I, like I said, I was running away from church, and I didn't want to go for church meetings. Uh, but then, uh, uh, to cut a long story short, uh, we met uh, in, uh, was it 87 or 88 when we started, when we started met, and uh, then, yeah, I fell in love, love with her, and I knew she, she was the one. Two things, love thy neighbor, and if you're single, come to church, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Pixie, what about you? How did you? How did you hear from God and realize that he was the one? Harold was a new Christian when I met him. Mm -hmm. But here was one man that I knew would lead me. I wouldn't have to lead him. Uh, so that was one thing that was very evident from the start. And everyone I introduced me, though they, they didn't know him, endorsed him. So I had the blessings of the church and of course my family, needless to say. And the more I grew to know him, I grew to respect him and love him. And that journey has been three decades and more. 34 years. 34 years. Can we have a round of applause for that? Um, so I'm not married, but I've she seen my share of, of married couples and I've heard my share of marriage struggles. I would like to read a list and correct me if I'm wrong. In the past seven years, your health has seen its share of setbacks. There have been two heart attacks. There's been a Parkinson's diagnosis. There's been spinal surgery. There's been complications post-surgery, and the entire family has gone through its round of COVID, yeah. yes. right? And all of this has happened over the course of six to seven years. That's right. How did you guys deal with it as a couple? Because that is, that is a level I cannot imagine. That's a level I cannot even fathom. That's, that's pain and tears and struggles that, that can easily put a strain on, on the most loving of couples and the most loving of families. So how did that affect you as a couple? How did you go through that as a couple? You want to go first or you want me to go? Ladies first. Uh -huh. Ladies first. Okay. <laughs> Ladies first. <laughs> I like the rules here. I really like them. Uh, well, uh... When I was first diagnosed with Parkinson's, I accepted it as God's will for me. Not his sovereign will, but his permissive will. And I said, why do I have to get only good things from God? Why not the difficult things? And I went back from there. But of course, when the reality hit, it was difficult because I know how debilitating this can be. But I learned that instead of worrying about my future, what my body will be like in years to come, I take it on a daily basis. Because no two days are alike. And uh, that's why I'm here. It's so easy sometimes for me to be in bed, but I, I tell myself, my body doesn't dictate what I do. I dictate to my body what, what it will do. So it's a struggle. It's a daily struggle. But I call it my daily manner. Amen. What about you, Harold? Yeah. So the last couple of years has been difficult. If I say it was, it was hunky-dory, I'd be, you know, it won't be true to mm -hmm. my emotion and feeling. So it had has been a struggle, especially when she was diagnosed with, first with Parkinson's, uh, the heart attacks, two heart attacks, and last year, 
I think it was the most challenging year in my entire life. Last year when she had the spine surgery and uh, followed by, by COVID. But during the spine surgery, as you know, that she was in the ICU for nine days. Uh, two doctors said she was critical. The doctors called the entire family, the family to come and see her, uh, which, you know, which she was almost dying at, at that time. I was holding on to scripture uh, and, you know, holding on to God. But it was, it was very difficult. So that was the, for me, it was like walking to the valley of the shadow of death. But God came through. I know a lot of people were praying. You all were praying. A lot of people were praying around the world. It's nothing. The doctor himself said it was a miracle of God that she came through. Yeah. So it was very challenging. But I also reminded myself of something you know, because we, uh, today, you know, it's so easy to divorce. It's so easy to leave one partner, they're sick, or, you know, we don't agree. But I keep reminded, and during that time, I reminded myself of the covenant that we've made before God, you know. And it's in the, when we, we made a covenant before God, we said for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, till death do us part. And I remind myself of that, and that's what I'd like to see. In the end, till death do us, us part. We stay together through thick and thin, you know, and we love each other till the very end. I think that's what God does for us. And he loves us. He doesn't abandon us. He doesn't leave us. But God is with us, and we want to model something of that. And you felt his presence through the fire as you went through it, uh, so to speak. Sometimes, yes, yeah, sometimes no. Yeah. You know, when, like I said, I was holding on to scripture. Sometimes it felt God was far away. Mm. It's like the, my prayers were hitting the roof and just coming back. Mm. And, you know, because we're not seeing the answer that we're looking for. Mm. And I remember texting Fuzi, uh, you know, because I got so many scriptures for so many people and I was holding on to scriptures. And I thought, you know, I'm, I'm holding on to faith, but what if she, she dies? What if she passes away? And I texted Fuzi. I didn't text everyone in that message, but I texted Fuzi. I said, in the end, I will have to say that God is faithful to his word. You know, because ultimately our life belongs to him. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, Pixie, I remember you just said one of the questions that you, or one of the prayers that you prayed was, why not? Yeah. And oftentimes, and I am no exception, I ask, why God? Why me? <laughs> you know, out of everyone, why me? Did you, did you go through that, that, sure. that, time of pain, because none of us can even um, imagine or put ourselves in, in the shoes that you've been in. Certainly, I wouldn't say that I haven't, I, I have my down days, and haven't always there to encourage me, but yes, I have those. I, I wouldn't, to say anything else would be a lie. Yeah. You spoke about, uh, you spoke about how You've, you've heard messages and you keep yourself, you keep yourself surrounded by, by positive reinforcements, yeah. scriptures and, and um, you know, uh, you listen to preachers and, and you, you follow people who, who encourage you. Talk about your, your impact, you know, their impact on you. One of the things that I do is a daily, is part of my daily devotion is of course I listen to some good uh, worship songs uh, when the kids go uh, and uh, I listen to preachers. But one of my favorite preachers is Nick Wojcic and he inspires me. Here is a man, if no one's heard of him, please hear him. Here is a man without arms or legs and he's being used mightily by God. If that man can be used, why not me? Why not me? Thank you. Thank you, Pixie and Harold. We are going to end on this note, why not me? Um, in Hindi, there's a line that says, picture abhi baki hai mere dost. <laughs> Which means if the movie has not had a, a, you know, has not had a decent ending, there's more to come. All right, and there's more to come. We'll hear more from Pixie and Harold and the family next weekend. So please be there on time and looking forward to hear more from you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.